Young Jeffrey. What's up there, son? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, the boy. Uh, we're going to be playing some grass court tennis today. We've been playing it for a week and a half now. It's great. Shocking. Absolutely beautiful. Shocking. And the good. courts are firming up and they're just, God, they're good. All right. <laughs> that sounds great. Good for you. Well, uh, yeah. when we're done, I'm heading out to the grass here in the desert. Drove down yesterday. Uh, and uh, got to go out there and hit my boy Owen a little bit this morning. Nice. It's already 80 plus out here, and it's a little bit past. Ouch. Yeah, so it'll be toasty, 107 or something like that today, just for just for yeah. fun. So, uh, look, we got a topic today I want to talk about, which is um, how we how we need to kind of uncomplicate things. But uh, before we get to the uncomplication discussion. We've got a little offer for everybody, which is a free private 10-minute coaching call. The three of us, you, me, and Jeff, we get in the, we get in the phone. And uh, it, 10 minutes doesn't sound like very much, but interesting every time we get in one of these calls, Jeff, how, how much information gets dispensed in terms of, uh, really? <laughs> okay, I did not know that's, that was going on. And it goes on and on, and the next thing you know right. is, Fellas, could you come over and help me with this thing, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, look, if there's one thing in your game right now, whether it's singles uh, and or doubles, that's the way to handle that 10-minute call is to really get clear on what that is and, uh, and bring it to the call, and Jeff and I will help put you on the path to get the result that you're looking for. The way to get on that free call, again, it's private. Go over to goballhunting.com, put in your first name and email address, Click the button and you'll get access to our online calendar so you can schedule a perfect day in time that works for yeah. you. Uh, let's see, Jeff. So here's what I want to talk about today. And that is kind of along this theme that, that um, the fundamentals, the core fundamentals uh, of stroke technique, of tactics and strategies... Uh, of the between points time that we try to manage, the core fundamentals seem to uncomplicate everything. And the more that we stray away from what are the, what are the core fundamentals, the more that we spend time on YouTube looking for a little, a little quick hit, a little quick fix, a little, uh, please give me a little nugget right now. A tip? Yes. A tip? Yes. <laughs> Is the more we do that, the more we complicate things and... I think we all would agree that a confused mind says, uh-uh, no. And so, yeah. so my point is, is that, um, <clears throat> and I would say that most players who've been playing the game for any amount of time, even if you're just getting started out, if you, you, know, it, you know, and if you're just getting started out and you've, you've had the, the opportunity to work with someone who really has a system that's based on core fundamentals, Good on you, mate. I mean, you are right. you are really <laughs> lucky. But for the rest of us, um, we've been inundated ever since the uh, start of the internet and video yep. with just excess crap. So, so it's kind of a two part thing. I want to ask you is 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 maybe just a one part thing, but it's it's based on um, you know, a confused mind says no that. Um, that if we're not focused on core fundamentals, that um, that it gets complicated. Assuming that we are at that point where 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 we've been layered and layered with garbage, what do we right. do? What do we do yeah. to uncomplicate things? Right, and then I actually getting to the list of what is a core fundamental, right? And without getting into that laundry list, which is which is really actually basic, right? So for me, it's always. Um, First, an interior chuckle, <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> and then an exterior question, which is somebody comes, we're working on it, Jeff. I want to get back on the court, or gosh, I've been playing, I've been playing, you know, league tennis three seasons now, but I just feel like, I feel like I'm all over the map, you know. I just, I really want to get back to the fundamentals, Jeff. And I have the internal chuckle, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and then the external question is, well, well, Brent, why'd you ever leave them? Yeah. Right. I mean, because that really is 
that really is the basis for everything else that might go wrong in your game, right? And it doesn't matter technique. But if you're not, I mean, I know when I walk back on the court, God, literally every day when I walk on the court to, to actually hit balls, you know, to, and like tonight I'm playing an exhibition, I, I, the first thing I do is just to inject a little energy into the legs and the feet. I got to feel that. I got to feel like, like I've got, I'm paying attention. Right. The next thing I, I focus on is let's let's pay attention to the ball. Let's watch the ball a little bit closer. Pay attention to that contact point. Next thing, um, let's make sure we're making we're prepping. So I'm not even going to explain what that is because that's where things start to can kind of go off the reservation. Because I think you know the question you're asking is not technique, but what are the fundamentals and why would we ever leave them? So. So I'm not concerned if someone doesn't have a classic forehand or a windshield wiper forehand or this or that. I'm concerned with, are you preparing when the other guy makes contact? I don't care what your forehand looks like. If you prepare early, it's going to be better, mm -hmm. right? Just out of the gate without even mucking around with, oh, we could tweak this a little bit or tweak that a little bit. So I think, I think you're absolutely right. You know, tips and helpful hints along the way actually can can lead you off the path of enlightenment because it, it we start to focus on that little adjustment and we move that adjustment over into this column of fundamental. And I think that's just a huge mistake right. that, that players make is they start taking tips and hints and, and adjustments and moving them into what's a fundamental or not. Yeah. And so we can, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's guys that have different ideas about what the fundamental is, but I just think that, you know, those basic ideas, you know, inject a little energy in the legs, let's get the feet pumping a little bit, let's prepare early, and um, let's let's pay attention yeah. to the ball and actually, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, well, that's, it's, it's, um, it's interesting to me, and I, I find myself doing this from, from time to time as well, is, is I'm, I'm looking for something else other than what could be considered a, you know, the, I mean, I got, I got lucky and I was, you know, I was in my early thirties when I got to Mr. Stowe. And so right. I'd had layers upon layers of not only a DIY do it yourself type of stuff, but just, you know, little in inputs here and there from other players or other coaches that, that the little inputs never ever were about what you just described. Which right. is, which is, look, and, 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 and that's what I got from, from Mr. Stowe was that first day when I saw him just going, look, you've got nothing. You've got nothing that I can build on, which, which you know, actually a lot of people might have gone, that's kind of harsh. And, <laughs> and, and yet for me, it was a huge relief because I knew that uh, I was now in the hands of somebody who was going to build me up from, from the ground. Right. And, and not say, oh, well, gee, you know, yeah, we could, we could kind of tweak this or tweak that. And I just think that, I, I just think that's, it's really a challenge now with players who have been, who have not had the benefit of, of being right. with someone who's really got a sound system of someone that helped Don Budge win a grand slam. I don't know, he might know a little something. He might have a little insight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I guess I guess the point is is and and then and then you know the story that I always like 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 to share about about the fundamentals is after I had worked with Tom for a while and one day I was at the Berkeley Tennis Club and was you know was had been probably six months into it and one of Tom's former assistants Bill Bill Crosby came up to me and. I said, man, you're really doing great. You're really working on the thing. And I said, look, what's the next step for me, man? What do I got to do here? Because I'm still not quite settled in. And he said the exact same thing that you just did. He said, look, there's two things that you got to do. Number one is you just got to get into the hitting position as soon as possible. And right. Then, and then whatever that is, whatever, whatever that, that is, is. Right. And he didn't tell me what it was. He just said, you got to get in hitting position as soon as possible. And then the second thing is just got to just got to decide, you know, where are you going to hit this ball? And that's, and I kind of was waiting around for that's it. And, and he, and he, he, he said, <laughs> yeah, he said, and he said the most important thing, and he didn't say it in these words, but the way that I eventually 
sort of interpret it was getting into the hitting position is is uh, something in tennis that 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 golfers obviously do, right? right? So not only is the ball not moving, but they get to address the ball with a stance that puts them into they're either they're either right hand or left handed. That that choice is now taken taken <laughs> off the table, right? right? The spacing in terms of getting themselves in the right position is 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 off the table. I mean, it's not like okay, well, I'm a right-handed guy, but I got I got to start behind the ball and do the little. Um, who was the right? Who was the, the movie Happy uh, Gilmore, where you go running Happy up Gilmore, to it? Happy Gilmore, right? You don't have to go. You don't have to go running up to it. So you get to put yourself in a stance that's a perfect hitting position, and you yeah. get the then at your own time, you get then to start the swing. So golfers, you know, look, I know a lot of guys out there are golfers. Come on, man. How tough can that be? All right. I get it. I don't mean it that way. All right. I know it's tough. <laughs> Baseball hitters, right, they, they get to choose which side that they're going to be able to swing, swing the bat from. They don't have to get in front of home plate and nope. face the pitcher and then decide, well, slightly to my right, so now all of a sudden, you know, I'm a left-handed right. hitter or, or whatever. Um, certainly there's a moving ball. When you when you hit a baseball and it's hard, so that's a bit it's of a, round and it's a bit of a, it's round. It's a bit of a challenge. It's round yeah. and and the and the <laughs> utensil you're using is round. That's right. So it is it is a, you know it's it, tough. it has its amazing challenges. The other thing you know when you bring up baseball that and I use this analogy a lot is um, and I do golf, baseball, and tennis. And what I like to compare and contrast it to in baseball a, a batter hitting is that a batter has to make a choice whether he's going to take a cut at the ball or not and most of the time the ball is not in his favorite spot because the pitcher there it's cat and mouse right the pitcher and the catcher are in cahoots against the batter right <laughs> and so everybody knows everybody Everybody's got the black book on who's what, do this, do that. This is his tendency. This is blah, 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 right? So in tennis, though, we do have the luxury slash privilege, if we're willing to put the energy into the work, to move home plate. Meaning the ball's coming in on trajectory uh, at a certain pace, at a certain spin, at a certain that. So it's going to pass through your favorite spot twice. On the way up and on the way down. Or sometimes it's right in the apex right there, right? But, but it's going to pass through your favorite spot twice. And so you can make a choice to put the energy in and actually make that ball fit you. Because you get the luxury of getting to move around 360 and all around and everything. So, so tennis has that unique quality. And when, and when I explain it that way, players tend to really like go, oh my gosh, I, I kind of never thought about it that way. I go, yeah. When I feed the ball or we're rallying, make the ball fit you. Yeah. Make it comfortable as possible. And it's amazing. All of a sudden, rally lengths increase. Their consistency increases. And again, I'm not talking about technique. I'm just saying, can we prepare early? Now, you move around and make the ball fit you. Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> it's, no, that's, it's like a, well, no, that's exactly right. And, and, uh, and, and so I guess the point is, is that one is – Core fundamental number one is get into the hitting position as soon as possible because the longer you're in the hitting position, and that means that you've committed, in tennis you've got to choose, well, is the ball on my right, is the ball on my left? Either it's a forehand, right. either it's a backhand. And this, the faster you get into a quality hitting position where you can do what you've just described, the more time, in theory, even if it's a nanosecond, the more time you have to measure when the ball is going to arrive into your ideal strike zone. And I think right. that, that one of the strategies that you and I promote is, well, let's make it tough on your opponent to get into a high quality hitting position so that they've got time to measure. The more you serve right at somebody, if, if they're the kind of player that doesn't really move quickly out of the way, guess what? Right they're going to be hitting you lots of baseball pop-ups, 
right? We love that. Yeah, Dutch, totally. Man. If you want, if you want to be like the most popular dude in the club, in doubles, and you want your 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 little cell phone ringing off the hook, where you need to recharge the battery every few to every few hours because guys or gals are calling you up, going, "Hey, would you partner with me, man? Because I've seen how right. you've served to the body, and I'm getting all kinds of." And and now, and now relationship wise, you're a stud. Yeah. People, people are, people are happy with you. So think about that. I think that, that we need to get guys and, and, and my whole topic today is to get guys to think about what are the core fundamentals? Because if you know what they are and the, and the first one that we're talking about here is getting into the hitting position, the sooner you embrace that, the less confusion you're going to have with yes. the stroke technique that you are currently. Right. Using. Using. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, the, the other thing that happens too, when you make a quick, when you prep quickly, it there's a little time warp that happens. And all of a sudden, it feels like the ball is moving slower because you're actually waiting to hit the ball now. So, so it's a really interesting kind of phenomenon that happens. And then people will say, well, I got too much time to hit the ball. And it's like, oh, really, dude? Really? First, you're complaining that you know, you're late all the time and now you're telling me you have too much time, not possible. So, you know, it's like, a little right, rough. Which one, which... a little rough there, JJ. I like right? it. <laughs> I just kind of go, dude, like, you know, so what happens? I'm, I'm going like, to charge you, you actually... double for today's lesson, by the way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true. So, cause, cause I think it's a, again, it's a, another blind spot sometimes is that I know if I prep quickly, even if I have to take, three, four steps out to the ball, if I've prepped, I'm waiting to hit the ball, even if I'm running full tilt boogie out to the ball, I'm waiting to hit it. It's just a matter of whether I can get in front of it in time. Yeah. It's not whether I can swing the racket in time, but that's, that's the beauty of, of that kind of early preparation is that even on the dead run, you, you still feel like you're measuring the ball well, yeah. as opposed to running out to the ball and then trying to arrange the party, and then trying to arrange your forehand or backhand, and that's when things just go off the rails and it just gets ugly. And then you say, "Oh, I got to move my feet better. I got to do this better." No, let's just well, <laughs> handle this. Think one about. Before. I mean, think about this too as well, which is, which is tennis is really, really kind of there should be a two shot mindset because, um, right. I mean, in baseball it's the same thing, right? Baseball, you hit the ball, you have to run. The first thing you have to do is run to first base. Right, which Darn is it. which is kind of the in, in tennis that might be considered the next best court position. So, the sooner you embrace fundamental core fundamental number one, which is an early prep, getting into the proper hitting position, is that now you execute the shot, but you're you're way more on balance and and, and ready to move to the next best court position, depending right. on on all the variables on where you are in the court, where your opponent is on the court, and the shot that you've hit. So don't think that, that just because you're getting into an early hitting position that, that that's the end of it. All, all that means is right. that now you've upped your chances of being consistent with whatever shot you want to hit, but you now are putting yourself into a position to be able to efficiently right. move to the next best court position. So, Okay, okay. so in, in, incoming. Yes. Incoming, this is not a tip. This is not a whatever. This is actually a core fundamental of understanding what waiting for the ball is. Waiting is not static, meaning I've prepped, and like you just said, I've prepped, and I'm just going to stand here and wait for the ball. Waiting is active. Once you've made the turn, your feet should be active. You don't have to be jogging in place, but there should be left, right, left, right, left, right movement of your weight as you're micro adjusting to a ball if it's coming right to you. But waiting is active, it's not static because the activity is where your timing is born out of. It's no different like when you throw a ball, the feet plant and then you throw and it happens like that. Feet plant, then you throw. Anybody that's you know, played in a little baseball, throw the ball or something, and there's a timing to it. It's not like you plant your feet and then there's a hesitation because if there is, you wanna replant your feet again because that's where the timing is born out of, right? So anyway, there's your, that's the end of today's episode nugget is waiting is active. Yeah. It's not static. Yeah. 
No, it's good. That's there good. you go. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Well, you just, you just drop the microphone. Yeah, That's boom. it. That's it. Boom. See you boom, later. Boom, baby. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, a couple things. Thanks for hanging out with us again today. Another episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. And I really want you to embrace this, this whole notion that uh, the core fundamentals is where it's at. And uh, so, listen, I want to I wanna hear from everybody today. Um, I know that this is something. I'm not, not to steal your thunder there, JJ, but I want to. Really want to hear from you, from everyone. If you're on YouTube, leave us a comment today. I want yep. to know. I guess I want to know if if this resonated with you, and then I want to know: Is there any confusion that you've got right now? Something that you're working on? Leave right. us a comment on YouTube. If you if you're not on YouTube, if you're on the audio thing, shoot us an email, um, which would be let us know at goldballhunting.com. And just kind of check in with us on this topic today. I really want to, I really want to dig yeah. into it, maybe some more in some in some upcoming episodes. Yeah. But sure. in the meantime, Jeffrey, what would we like to find folks to do in addition to that? Like us, share us, please subscribe. Do what Jim Brent just said. Yeah. Let us know what you think. That's right, man. All right. Well, listen, guys, get out there today. Help someone else. Have a spectacular day, Jeff. We'll do this again tomorrow. Great. Can't wait.